In the heart of Tanzania, there exists a tribe with a remarkable connection to nature. Among the Hadza people, an ancient tradition has persisted through generations, a language not of words but of melodies that harmonize with the songs of birds. And in today's video, we will be disclosing how they talk to birds in their unique language or signs. So without further ado, let's dive into the video. Here we begin. In northern Tanzania, near Lake Eyasi, there is a group called the Hadza. They have lived there for a long time, but no one knows exactly how long. They are known as hunters and gatherers, hunting animals and gathering food from the land. The Hadza have their own unique way of understanding their history through food. They believe that their ancestors used to easily catch wild animals just by looking at them. But things have changed now. The Hadza face challenges like farms taking up their hunting grounds. They live in small camps and make decisions together. In their community, everyone is treated equally, with no one having more power than others. So the popular thing here is they talk to birds, but how? When it comes to talking to birds, they frequently have in-depth knowledge of the regional ecologies and have developed the ability to monitor and comprehend animal behavior through many generations. They got this knowledge from their ancestors many years ago, and it has passed through different generations. Observing the birds. The Hadza tribe frequently devote much time to monitoring and studying various creatures, especially birds. They may interpret the behaviors of birds as signals or messages by carefully monitoring how they behave. For instance, particular bird sounds or behaviors may signal the presence of particular species, particular weather patterns, or even possible risks. Communication occurs in various methods. Now, after observing and using their knowledge, they use various communication methods. For example, some tribes mimic the vocalizations and cries of various bird species. They could try to interact with or communicate with birds or other members of their society by mimicking bird noises. This custom is prevalent throughout the world's civilizations. Symbolic gestures are also fascinating in Hadzabi's interaction with birds. They imitate avian behaviors with their hands, arms, and body motions, resulting in visual communication. These actions help build rapport, start conversations, and communicate ideas, strengthening the bond between people and birds. Well, we must say, this is indeed an art of communicating with species like birds. This has not been seen anywhere else and is such an amazing and intriguing thing to come across. It seems so cool. Honeybees are the favorite or most popular birds they talk to. Surprisingly, though they communicate with various species, the Hadza's favorite of the available commodities is honey. However, beehives are difficult to access and much harder to detect since they are high up in thick-trunked baobab trees and ferociously defended by their stinging inhabitants. An innocent black and white bird the size of a robin, the greater honey guide, enters. Greater honey guides, a separate species of the honey guide family, are excellent hive finders and enjoy grubs and beeswax. According to some estimates, this is advantageous for the Hadza, who acquire roughly 15% of their calories from honey. So whenever they wish to find honey, the Hadza people yell and whistle a particular song. And then, a honey guide will fly into the camp if one is nearby, chatting and fluttering its feathers. Then, the Hadza pursue it while crying and gathering their axes and torches. They locate the right tree and then smoke out the bees, cut it open, and remove the tasty combs from the nest by following the honey guide until it settles close to the location of its cargo. The honey guide continues to observe. Also, as we know, honey is one of the most energy-rich foods, and when it comes to Africa, African bees are highly aggressive and used to harm any intruder. Even the experts are afraid of them, but the Hadza people proved it to be something else. They are like friends to these bees and know how to subdue bee defense. They wedge a bundle of dry wood wrapped in palm fronds over a long pole, then set the bundle on fire, hoist it up, and rest it against a beehive in a tree. When most of the bees are smoked out of that beehive, the people chop the tree, tolerate the stings of these bees that remain and scoop out the liquid gold within, which we call honey, and the tribe continues to take the amount of honey they need. Now you know how this tribe talks to the birds and takes their help, so this is how the Hadza tribe talk to birds. Isn't it surprising enough? Have you ever imagined people or tribes who don't need fancy tools or weapons to hunt for food? The Hadzabi tribe possesses a remarkable skill, catching animals with their bare hands. Surprisingly, you heard it right. 
With nothing but their own hands, these skilled hunters venture into the wild and capture creatures that most would consider impossible to catch. Prepare to be amazed as we delve into this video to know the extraordinary techniques and ancient wisdom that allow the Hadzabi tribe to triumph over nature's challenges. Here we begin. The Hadza people of northern Tanzania have maintained their hunter-gatherer lifestyle for more than 30,000 years, possibly over 50,000 years, while living close to Lake Ayasi. Due to similar click sounds, their language was formerly grouped with the Khoisan. Still, it has subsequently been reclassified as isolation, meaning it has no connections to any other languages. They are not genetically related to any other tribe, as their location makes them very wonderful and intriguing at the same time. Moreover, unlike the other African tribes, there are no traces of this tribe elsewhere in the world, making them the oldest tribes of Africa. How do they hunt animals and carry them with bare hands? After hunting an animal, one hunter shouts, and they all run toward the shouting hunter. One of the hunters stands still firmly with Kirk's dick dick with a perfectly placed arrow on his shoulders. Their eyes do not have a single sense of pride or celebration. Nevertheless, he did what he came for, and now they all have sufficient amounts of meat they need and have started preparing to return to their camps. The dick dick is slung over the shoulder of the hunter, and they all begin to walk towards the baobab tree. So from this, now you know that the baobab trees are the common area for the tribe and are a very important part of the Hadza tribe. The tree's fruit makes up 13% of its diet, and the trees are often seen to have large beehives that provide them with an endless supply of honey. They also provide shade to the hunter. Not only shade, but also act as their kitchen and dining rooms as well. Now, continuing, after carrying the animal on their shoulder, they move further. The hunters lit the fire themselves, and it took them just two seconds to light up the fire. When I was at the top, they placed it unskinned, unattached to the flames. They sit back, relax, talk for a while, and pluck the birds they have caught and killed. Once all of the animal's hair is burnt, it is taken off the flame, and all the organs like the diaphragm, liver, and shoulder cuts are placed on the coal so that they are cooked properly and do the same to the small birds too. Then they eat a piece of the meat with the community, but the birds are kept for the hunters. They handle different kills in very specific ways. The hunters eat small birds in the bush, while larger prey that is small enough to be carried is taken back to be shared at camp. If they kill a big animal, such as a kudu or giraffe, the whole camp is moved to the food source, where they feast for days. What happens when they discover meat? Whenever a Hadza person finds some fresh dung, they scoop it up and say, Eland. Eland is very good news. It means up to 950 kilograms of antelope meat. There is no fridge or freezer in the Hadza kitchen, meaning everything must be eaten when caught. Like the animals they hunt, they can feast one day and go hungry the next. Popping down to the shops is out of the question. The nearest shop is a one-day walk in each direction. The Hadza have no money anyway. So an Eland means a big party for everyone. That is the most efficient way to use the meat. They carry the dung around in their hands. It is usually soft, but not quite soft and fresh enough. Their diet. As hunter-gatherers, the Hadza rely on hunting with handmade tools and gathering edible plants for survival. Their diet mainly consists of plants, but also includes meat, fat, and honey. They don't have domesticated animals or farms to grow or store their food. Men and women have different diets. The men focus on meat and honey. The women focus on tubers and berries. Men hunt and women gather. Then after eating enough for the day, they stop hunting and gathering. The Hadza are living fossils. They represent life before the advent of agriculture. So what do you think of these tribal people catching animals with bare hands? Comment below your views and subscribe for more such videos.